Hello, dear colleagues. My name is Alexey Alexeyev. I'm an adjunct professor, the Department of Classics and Regio Studies, University of Ottawa. Welcome to my presentation. This presentation consists of three parts. First, I will provide a general description of the solid digital research framework and its online prototype. Second, I will briefly describe the project's theoretical framework and methodological innovations being tested in the system. And finally, I will demonstrate the system's information architecture, functionality, interface and content treatment using the example of a particular iconographic subject and by browsing through a sequence of the prototype's pages. The specialized online iconography database or SOLID is a customizable digital research framework for the accumulation, classification, contextualization, interpretation, presentation, and dissemination of iconographic records. It functions as a publicly accessible website and is particularly suited for research projects focused on subjects producing rich and diverse iconography and represented by a significant number of material instances such as in the case of mass-produced coinage. The SOLID is designed to be used as a facilitating instrument for advancing a wide range of scholarly arguments and thus helping to answer pertinent research questions. The system is used in the field of numismatic iconography to assist in such common research tasks as establishing, documenting and visualizing the geographical and chronological trajectory of particular subjects, symbols or attributes and identifying and mapping out the associated distribution patterns, devising and implementing comprehensive typologies, elucidating issuing authorities' rationales for choosing and proliferating certain emblematic devices and related imagery repertoires. Estimating the extent of formal and thematic intermedia and cross-cultural influences by examining coins in broader archaeological contexts, together with a variety of extra numismatic comparanda, such as statues, sarcophagi, amulets, vases, murals, mosaics, and so on. Ascertaining levels of concordance between literary sources and numismatic artifacts concerning a particular iconographic phenomenon and providing positive identification of nebulous iconographic subjects. In this digital endeavor, I build upon the groundbreaking work of researchers at the Department of Classical Studies, University of Messina, and their flagship online projects, the Digital Iconographic Atlas of Numismatics and Antiquity, Diana, and Numismatic Iconography Lexicon. The practical application of the solid methodology, procedures, and infrastructure is demonstrated using the example of the Serpentarium Mundi, a specialized iconography compendium cataloging representations of real and imaginary ophiomorphs, such as snakes, serpents, dragons, and other composite creatures, in the visual arts of ancient Old World civilizations. The project is envisioned as a long-term collaborative, multi- and interdisciplinary enterprise. The website information architecture is fully expandable and allows the addition of an unlimited number of articles and figures, thus facilitating enduring collaborative research. The project's strategic goal is to become the ultimate online Ophidian iconography resource. Currently, the Serpentarium Mundi website serves as the SOLID's limited functionality test prototype. The compendium's compositional framework uses the structural metaphor of traditional media and consists of six volumes, organized according to artistic medium or function, sculptures and reliefs, adornments and tools, coins, vases, paintings and mosaics, and manuscripts. The volumes represent the full range of arts, gradually advancing from the three-dimensional to the two-dimensional. Each volume is divided into six specialized chapters, 
based on the type of iconographical subject and the context. For example, fantastic creatures, deities and spirits, or objects and symbols. Each chapter consists of various numbers of articles focused on a specific subject. For example, Agatha Damon, Athena, or Aegis. Each article includes three common components. Gallery, a complete catalog of iconographic types represented by standard size figures featuring carefully selected artifacts and their detailed descriptions. Library, a survey of related primary sources and the selection of literary quotations crucial for the artifact's iconographic interpretation. And registry, containing the geographical, chronological, statistical, and other pertinent data. In future, the deployment of specialized applications such as ArcGIS, GEFI, and NVivo for the collecting, organizing, visualizing, and presenting of related content and network analysis data is envisioned. The article's organizational structure is guided by the following methodological scheme iconography, analytic or proto iconic stage, pictographic inventorization, iconology, synthetic or proper iconic stage, descriptive identification, and iconosophy, hermeneutic or meta iconic stage, contextual interpretation. The associated interpretive and descriptive tasks are informed by influential works in visual semiotics, image theory, and applied iconography. The description and classification procedures are also informed by authoritative art history guidelines, such as the Art and Architecture Thesaurus, and categories for the description of works of art developed at the Getty Research Institute. Currently, I am focusing on Volume 3 of the Compendium, dedicated to coins. Special attention is paid to the notion of numismatic artifacts as compact semantic units representing a distinct semiotic system. The general works on Greco-Roman coinage, as well as the specialized literature on numismatic iconography and catalogues of the prominent museum collections, both printed and online, are extensively consulted throughout the research. This research is inspired by ontology-based iconography, a pioneering approach in the advanced study of iconographic records conducted at the Warburg Institute in London and the Institute of Mathematics and Informatics in Sofia. In the context of this study, ontology is understood as a knowledge-organizing process. It provides a conceptual model for describing a system within a certain domain of discourse consisting of types of entities, properties, and relations. The primary purpose of ontology is to limit complexity and help to convert data into information and knowledge. The use of ontologies in knowledge-based systems facilitates effective communication between various groups and domains, and thus provides the foundation for knowledge dissemination and interdisciplinary collaboration. A novel analytical device, the three-faceted formal semantic indicator, facilitates the development of the project's classification taxonomies. Its main purpose is to identify the distinct, meaningful components of complex iconographic expressions and to provide detailed, exhaustive, highly formalized descriptions of those components and the relations between them. The formal semantic indicator's compositional elements correspond to three main ontological categories – beings, properties, and relations. The device is comprised of three fundamental facets – identifiers, descriptors, and operators. It also contains 27 relational facets, 16 identifiers, 6 descriptors, and 5 operators. Thus, the formal semantic indicator's compositional hierarchy consists of three levels. First, fundamental facets, for example, identifier. Second, relational facets, 
or iconographic categories, for example, deity, animal or object, and third, iconographic subjects, for example, Apollo, snake or tripod. The formal semantic indicator is intended to contribute to future ontology-based iconography research as an instrument facilitating the description, contextualization, interpretation, and classification of images. Because the device's composition is structurally congruent with the Resource Description Framework, or RDF Semantic Triple, Subject, Predicate, Object, it could also be incorporated as a functional component into computational procedures involving machine-readable ontologies and metadata. Now let's look at the online prototype. I will use the article of Theopod Giant as an example. In order to access it, I will first navigate from the project's homepage to the Volume 3 Coins landing page. And from there to the article's landing page. As you can see, the article's entry point is the gallery, with the thumbnails displayed in a six-column grid. By clicking on a thumbnail, one can navigate to a particular iconographic record with the good quality image of a specimen and its detailed description. In this case, the reverse of the coin is of greatest interest, and that's why it is given a priority and shown first by default. The obverse is also available for viewing, and the mouse over functionality provides access to its image. Right under the image is a concise description of the coin's iconographic expression. The coin's detailed description is placed in two columns. On the left, the description of the coin as a material specimen, including the medium and dimensions. The coin's historical and geographical context, including the issue and authority and the mint, and the reference to current location and collection holder, in this case, the British Museum. The right column contains the nomenclature summary, including the coin type's code expressed in alphanumeric format, and a detailed description of the coin's iconographic components. This part uses three fundamental and 27 relational formal semantic indicators as facilitating devices. The descriptions are presented in highly formalized and standardized manner. They also deploy the repurposed mathematical and logical symbols when appropriate. At the bottom, there are references to the iconographic type's prominence and the subject's record in the comprehensive icon class database. Now let's navigate to the library. It contains a selection of relevant quotations from the classical literary corpus. Once again, the links to each particular instance are displayed in a six-column grid. By clicking on a selected instance's representation, one can access the particular quotation for a review. Let's pick something from the middle of the list. Let's say a reference 81 of it. Of particular interest is the fragment from his poem Fasti, Book 5, lines 35-46, where Ovid contributes to the ongoing discussion on the giant's anatomy, in particular their serpent legs. As you can see, this section deploys color coding. Direct mentions of the main subject, in this case the giants, are indicated by the blue color. Direct mentions of snakes or serpents and their derivatives are indicated by the orange-yellow color and are complemented by references to the source's original language and the word lemmas, in this case anguis. Important descriptive details that inform the artifact's iconographic interpretation are indicated by the green color. Finally, the registry. This section provides information on the geographical 
and historical context of the giant's numismatic iconography. The subject's distribution throughout four centuries, from the Middle Roman Republican to the late Roman Imperial, and from Gaul to Cilicia, is displayed in a timeline and map. The summarizing table provides a general overview of the pertinent coin type's production history at different means and by different issuing authorities. A close look at the map and table allows one to quickly identify the most prolific production centers for coins featuring giants as their iconographic subject. Rome, with 10 types and subtypes from around 100 BC to 300 CE, and Seleucia at Calicadnum, with 15, from Hadrian to Gallienus. Now I will be happy to respond to your comments and questions. Thank you.